So to give a little background uh, about what actually happened in the project, somebody approached me who had completed that project before and said, I think you would be a good candidate. Would you be interested in assembling a team um, and designing a interdisciplinary or cross-content uh, unit of study for some of your shared students? So our collaboration might be more about what are your struggles with individual students, not necessarily how are you teaching your content. So for example, it wouldn't be me going to the math teacher and say, hey, you know, I know some of your students are doing their homework in my class. I see you guys are working on the quadratic equation or quadratic formula. Like, what's going on with that? Uh, it's, I'm having difficulties with this student, or this student's being very successful. How are, how are these students for you in your classes? So the conversations were more about um, student behaviors than they were actual content. Um, working with my, what they call professional learning community, or PLCs, um, was something I was very comfortable with, but it only ever happened within the context of my content, so just English teachers. And so those conversations are really comfortable and easy to have, whereas now I was being asked to work alongside a math teacher and a science or social studies teacher. The amount of work isn't necessarily overwhelming, but for it being new work, sometimes that is overwhelming work. We're all great planners when it comes to our instruction, but it's planning in a new and different way that requires us to consider all content, not just our own. We looked at a few uh, examples, so the, the open ed resources that were available through ISME um, to take a look and see what are some other things that are being done. And we also had some direction. Right? And I think that was important too, that it wasn't like uh, ISME said, here you go, this is what we'd like you to do, now go do it. Um, but they actually provide some training. And a lot of their training had to do with finding that right text. So and a text that's going to be sort of the anchor text that's going to be common across all three of the disciplines. And so that was really the struggle, uh, was finding some topics in our own content that lended themselves to topics in the other contents. I thought another interesting part of the lesson was when students had an opportunity to find these challenging words in Jonathan Gast's American Progress. And so looking at the painting and seeing, I read myriad in the text, what does a myriad in the painting look like? Or effulgence, what does that look like in the painting? And where do these ideas, these larger ideas that we want students to grasp, where are they in both texts? I thought that was an important experience for the students. So the students that got to experience this work across all their classes, I think they really got a benefit that the students that just experienced it in my class or just experienced it in math got. They, they had a deeper understanding of this and I think their ideas were richer and the, the way that they're going to see encounters with texts like what I would give them in English in other classes, it's going to be more powerful because they're going to have that experience to draw on. I think that was one of the things that came out of those original meaningless conversations that cause so much frustration is that we really got to hear what it meant to be successful in a math class. So how do I really work with the content and show understanding of that content? And then what does it mean to be really successful in earth and environmental science, right? To be a student in that class, so to get to hear that directly from the science teacher and the expectations that they had, content expectations they had for their students, I think was important. So it's an opportunity for us not to just hear about what they're going to do in their classes with their content, but it was an opportunity for us to really develop an understanding and an appreciation for the work that they do with their content in their classes.
an open education resource I felt like was good in a couple ways. Number one, we got to go and look and see what resources they had available. And they actually had tools to help us plan this step by step, which I think was very important for us because having little to no experience in planning a, a unit that's so powerful in its ideas across three content, I think that was a challenge. And so having tools to support us in that work was beneficial. Having examples that we could reference was beneficial. But then also knowing that our work is now available for others to see and experience and use as an example in this process for them, I think that's also encouraging as well. I think one thing that I had to do to be successful and for my students to be successful with what we're asking the students to do is utilize the strengths of my teacher practice network and relying heavily on the math teacher for their insight. Other teachers, you know, talking to them across your what do they call it? professional networks through Twitter and you know sending out a tweet and saying hey uh, what have you guys done with this text help me out and getting getting uh, suggestions and input on what are some other things people have done in the past so not really limiting to just the people in my building but really trying to extend and reach out and see what else is being done with this work so that I can refine my practice